Hi, Mark Gordon with your weekend wrap-up. Um, this is Sunday, October 23rd, 2011. Looking here at the general markets, this is the NASDAQ 100, the QQQ, down about 1.5% uh, uh, this week. And um, getting support down here at this black dotted line, which is the 10-week moving average. But you can see the volatility that we've been under, uh, just massive price swings. Um, these last couple of weeks here were really strong, um, up two strong weeks in a row. And then uh, this week kind of um, got a little higher here and then pulled all the way back, got support down here and then closed uh, um, a little bit uh, in the uh, higher end of the range. So NASDAQ uh, kind of having a little consolidation week after a couple weeks of running here. Now this uh, uh, $60, uh, 59 and a half to $60 range has been an area of previous resistance here. So let's see what happens when we come up uh, into this range if we do uh, uh, this coming week. And uh, this is the S&P 500. Uh, these are the, the bigger cap stocks. Uh, better looking chart here. Um, put in three up weeks in a row here, up 1.14% this week. Uh, not a big gain, but nonetheless clearing this green dotted line, which is the 20-week moving average. A very nice sign there. Uh, you also notice that we're way above the 10-week moving average here. And broke free of this consolidation area. When we got above these peaks here, uh, we actually broke free of that. And you'll notice down here that volume picked up a little bit from last week. So buyers returned to the market as they push prices higher. So I'm very impressed with the action on the S&P 500. Expect overhead resistance to come here at the 40-week moving average, which is at $126.53, or about uh, $2.5 above where we're at. And looking at the small cap stocks, this is the Russell 2000. You can see that we had an absolutely even close here. Um, we lost 0.01%. So. Um, very, very, um, you know, just, just basically an even close here. Uh, came down here, tested uh, this area where the four-week and the ten-week uh, moving averages came together, successfully held there, and then came back up, closing at the top of the range. So um, small caps, uh, not uh, not as strong as the S&P 500, still below this 20-week uh, moving average and uh, way below the 40-week moving average. This will provide overhead resistance as prices try to move up. But nonetheless, uh, an even close showing some support in the markets, but still within this consolidation range, this, this area of volatility here. So um, small caps um, uh, not looking as strong as the big caps. And here is your financial stocks um, that uh, were actually strong uh, three weeks in a row, three up weeks in a row. Um, looking a lot like the S&P 500 chart with overhead resistance coming here at the 20-week moving average, a pickup in volume, so uh, more buyers came into these stocks. Uh, perhaps the bank stocks were beaten down too much and buyers are seeing a little value here. Uh, we'll have to see if we follow through on this uh, next week. Um, we closed at 1313, an ominous sign. Uh, we're going to have some overhead resistance here at the 20-week moving average in the 1350 area. And then again up here at the 40-week moving average at around uh, 1480. And let's look overseas to the emerging markets. Uh, a down week, uh, down 1.9%, um, got held here at the 10-week moving average, this blue line though, so closing right on it to finding some support there. Did not uh, make another high this week, um, uh, so we have what they call an inside day, a consolidation on decreasing volume. So we're going to take this as a stall here. A little bit of consolidation here after these uh, couple of weeks of big moves. And let's see what happens in the emerging markets. But a weaker looking chart, um, well under this 20 week moving average and well under this 40 week moving average with a nice sloping, uh, down sloping bias to this chart. So um, emerging markets trying to firm up, uh, trying to get a, uh, a, a trend going uh, to the upside. And I want to show you the volatility. This is the VIX, uh, volatility index. And um, you can see uh, that we got up here to 48, which is really very volatile. And um, had a pullback um, a couple weeks ago down to 28 here, but mostly in the 30, 30s range here with spikes into the 40s here, which is, uh, suggests a lot of volatility in the markets. Um, for most of the year, we were trading down in the teens and the 20s. Um, I like to see volatility around 20 uh, or below. Um, so we are in uh, very volatile times here. 
Okay, moving on now to gold. Um, the GLD uh, was down 2.37% this week, but you'll notice it is holding the line down here. It came back down here again this week and tested this lower trend line, which has been in place, um, well, on this chart, uh, all the way back into uh, mid-2010. Uh, so uh, once again, holding the line here as we come down and test. So interesting, that is at about the $156 level and um, got down there this week and then uh, closed a little below mid-range here. Um, but uh, um, trying to get a trend going here to the upside so far just sort of following this lower trend line on up on a slow creeping crawl and then um, uh, once we get above this uh, green line again your next resistance will come in here at the 10 week moving average which is about $170. So gold holding the uptrend despite this massive fall and um, uh, you know, pointing to higher prices uh, doesn't, you know, we're not in that big uptrend like we had, um, you know, uh, in the summertime, but nonetheless, we are holding here and grinding higher. And looking at silver, this is the SLV. It was down 2.74% last week. We're holding this sort of lower um, flag. Uh, if you draw a line along the tops and along the bottoms, they're going to come into a wedge area. So that, tr that little pattern is still in place. Um, and getting tighter and tighter. This will either resolve itself to the downside or the upside. We'll have to wait and see. If it does resolve itself to the upside, uh, certainly resistance will come in here uh, at this 40-week uh, uh, moving average. And also the 20-week is coming all together here. And so is the 10-week. So we've got a three major moving average convergence here, which is going to offer a lot of overhead resistance should prices get up there. And that would put us into the uh, high $34, $35 range. You can see here that uh, silver had a nice uh, uptrend going for uh, several months um, as it consolidated this big drop here. Um, we did recover uh, quite a bit up off the bottom, got to almost $43 here uh, back in August, and then um, broke this lower trend line here in a big way here uh, in September. And now we're sort of repairing that damage and seeing if we can't get some uh, action going to the upside. So silver getting ready to make a move, uh, either higher or lower. Let's wait and see. Wanted to show you a quick chart of Apple. Um, very volatile. Um, back here in September, got up to 423, just under 423 here, and pulled all the way back down here to 354. And then rallied strongly back up here, taking everybody by surprise, going to a new high uh, this last week, and then pulling back about 10%. Just, just fail, another failed breakout here. Big gap down here uh, on uh, between Tuesday and Wednesday and uh, on big volume. So Apple, very volatile, um, really um, just kind of whipping people in and out. So um, I guess they had one of their first bad quarters in a long time. So uh, maybe the tone of Apple is changing, but this stock has just been, uh, you know, relentless to the upside, um, just despite the bad market and all that, just to really defying gravity here. So anything can happen with Apple, one to keep an eye on for sure. I'll have uh, more charts uh, in uh, my next video for subscribers uh, where we'll go through all the key monster stocks that are um, uh, you know, uh, leading this market uh, higher. We are in a market rally. A lot of these stocks uh, are um, making sort of anemic breakouts, but nonetheless, um, they could gain strength as, as time goes on here. So they're worth taking a look at. So uh, thanks for watching.